name of our lesson, Guilt by Association, Part 2, False Prophets, Leaders, and Teachers. Let's begin with a reading out of Isaiah chapter 58, verse 1, so it may be known worldwide why lessons like these are timely in this hour for the house of of Yisrael. One verse in the book of the prophet Isaiah chapter 58 verse 1 we read cry loud spur not lift up thy voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgression and the house of Yaakov, their sins. And part one of this lesson, guilt by association, we hit hard on two known wannabe messiahs for the children of Israel. Hulan Mitchell Jr., a.k.a. Yahweh ben Yahweh, who faces judgment for his blasphemy and for his leading Hebrews astray and ben -Ami the bus driver, a.k.a. Ben Carter, the self-appointed Messiah in the desert of Demona, who lords over a community were known child molesters, rapists, and pedophiles are allowed to operate openly while calling that the kingdom of Yah. Just like I told Hulan Mitchell Jr. that everything that he and his whole camp was doing would eventually be would eventually be brought to the light Last Shabbat night, I warned ben the bus driver the exact same thing. And made sure that they all seen the lesson from last week down there in Demona. I warned you, ben the bus driver, that what happened to Hulan would happen to him. The whole world would soon find out what's really going down, down there in the so-called village of peace, in the desert of Demona. And believe it or not, y'all, unbeknownst to your brother Jacob, two days before we did part one of Guilt by Association last Shabbat, exactly one week ago, last Wednesday night, one of those young, out-of-control Hebrews down there in Demona drugged a young sister and raped her and ran and tried to hide behind his daddy up in ben camp. But this time they picked the wrong one because this little sister had a big 300-pound daddy, ex-Navy man, with trill, with seal training, who no longer resides down in ben camp, who went to the rapist's house, who drugged his daughter, and raped her, and beat the whiskers off that boy and his daddy. I want to commend that a Cody named Malaya, who posted on YouTube on, mon on Monday, 
an interview she did with that brother who defended his daughter, his daughter's honor, Downer and Demona, as well as numerous other interviews on her YouTube channel depicting the child molestation, rapes, and other cult-like behavior going on in the camp she resided in for over 30 years. And that sister also interviewed the young sister who was raped and drugged down there a week ago. And I'm glad to tell y'all, it looks like finally there are some Hebrews there who will seek justice for their loved ones. Because far too long, enablers have allowed known child molesters, pedophiles, rapists, Wife swappers, the whole nine yards to walk around with pride while the victims have been silenced. Or if you make too much noise, you get ran up out the camp. On behalf of y'all brothers and sisters scattered throughout this spoil, we praying for you, little brothers and sisters, because no child should be molested, even in Sodom and Gomorrah, let alone in the land of our ancestors. The very type of behavior that got them through head first out the land many years ago. If there's anybody in this room that agrees with that, put a 100 up in her. Far too long. Silence has been allowed to reign supreme. And the innocents have been harmed beyond imagination. Real men ain't never been scared of real men. And I'm here to tell all you punks and pedophiles and perverts, y'all need to crawl about that land on your hands and knees. Better meet a bus driver and this group of clown princes may sweep it under a rug and, and try to whisp it away. But I'm going to tell y'all right now, there's some brothers who done grew up down there in the ghetto of America that would blow noodles out your head for what y'all pulling down there in Demona. And if y'all was in the United States of America, most of y'all would be in a penitentiary right now for pulling little boys' drawers down past their ankles, slipping little girls' mickeys, and laced marijuana that's synthetic. Like, have y'all lost y'all minds? And y'all got the nerve to holler, that's the kingdom of God. I beg to differ. And let me tell all of you clowns, the Most High loves justice and righteousness. If all those babies got to walk around in shame from what some adult did, let alone some adult who calls himself a prince, Y'all going to have to answer for every abominable act. And we encourage our young brothers and sisters. The Most High did not intend for you to be caught up in that. And we don't like that our enemies try to old guilt by association game. By saying, look at them, they're cult. And all them Hebrew Israelites are in a cult. The purpose of this lesson is to make it known worldwide. You can't paint all of us with no broad brush. By the actions of a few. No more than we can call you Christians maniacs because of that Christian David Koresh down there in Waco, Texas. 
So you can flop your gums and run that guilt by association game amongst the unlearned of our brethren. But we arming our people with titanium steel so that they can hit hard. If you ever try one of Satan's tactics on one of us. So again, in part one, we hit hard on these two known wannabe messiahs and the wickedness that they're currently doing. Now, we are instructed to cry aloud and sprout not. And it's about time for those who have firsthand knowledge of any and all of these kind of abominations. To put an end to it. To be a real man of Yisrael. Because a wall of silence. And being obedient to wicked men. That got so many young Hebrews down there walking around in shame. And then allow these punk creeps. Perverts. We break their jaws in the STL. They can't walk around untouched. They scorn. They lepers. They have to move 500 miles away. Them Negroes shouldn't be allowed to stop running till they got to the borders of Egypt. Walking around defiant. Looking at whose son and daughter they going to choose up on next. It's that kind of silence that allows these perverts who molest and rape young children to continue to walk around free without the fear of repercussion. You got some Hebrew daddies who would have went to that boy's house and blew his brains out. And that daddy's too. If he looked like he wanted some pistol plate. For doing something like that to his baby girl. A lot of these noodle back Negroes allow their children to be sodomized. And raped. And keep quiet about it. For fear of being kicked out the camp. And their wives being handed over to some other lust-filled Negro running around down there. It's a damnable shame that this is being done in the Holy Land. Let's go to the book of Sirach, chapter 12. Many of y'all don't read, as you should, the so-called lost books that the heathens have tried to keep on the low, low through the centuries. But with all your getting, get you understanding concerning this book of Sirach we're about to hit. Chapter 12, verses 1 through 18. With all your getting, get you understanding. In Sirach chapter 12, verse 1, we read, when thou wilt do good, know to whom thou doest it. Know who you're doing good for, Zion. So shalt thou be thanked for thy benefits. Do good to the godly man, one who fears the Most High, and thou shalt find a recompense. You'll get paid back. And if not from him, yet from the Most High. There can no good come to him that is always occupied in evil. Nor to him that giveth no alms. Give to the godly man. And help not a sinner. How are you going to get around that? It's self-explanatory. Verse 5. Do well unto him that is lowly, but give not to the ungodly. 
When you turning over your whole checks, when your social security come, your disability come, and you giving it to the pimp, you done lost your mind. You giving it to the ungodly, and obviously you ain't read this Sirach with understanding. Verse 5 again. Do well unto him that is lowly, but give not to the ungodly. Hold back thy bread, and give it not unto him lest he overmaster thee thereby. Become your master, Lord, over you. For else thou shalt receive twice as much evil for all the good that thou shalt have done unto him. For the most high hated sinners and will repay vengeance unto the ungodly and keep of them against the mighty day of their punishment. Give unto the good. And help not the sinner. A friend cannot be known in prosperity. And an enemy cannot be hidden in adversity. In the prosperity of a man, enemies will be grieved. But in his adversity, even a friend will depart. Never trust thine enemy. For like as iron rusteth, so is his wickedness. Though he humble himself and go crouching, yet take good heed and beware of him. And thou shalt be unto him as if thou hast wiped a looking glass. I see you, player. And thou shalt know that his rust have not been altogether wiped away. Set him not by thee, lest when he hath overthrown thee, he stand up in thy place. Neither let him sit at thy right hand, lest he seek to take thy seat. And thou at the last remember my words, and be pricked therewith. Who will pity a charmer? that is bitten with a serpent, or any such as come near wild beasts. So one that go up to a sinner and is defiled with him in his sins. Who will pity? For a while he will abide with thee. But if thou begin to fall, he will not tarry. An enemy speaketh sweetly with his lips. But in his heart, he imagineth how to throw thee into a pit. He will weep with his eyes. But if he find opportunity, he will not be satisfied with blood. If adversity come upon thee, thou shalt find him there first. And though he pretend to help thee, yet shall he undermine thee. He will shake his head and clap his hands and whisper much, and change his continents. This is wisdom, Zion. Be ever mindful in the company that you keep, Yisrael. In part two of this lesson, this Shabbat. We gonna hit upon those who continue to pray upon the house of Yisrael. The purpose of this lesson, guilt by association, is being done to let it be known worldwide. The true remnant of the house of Yisrael don't like it when some out of control Hebrews have all Hebrew Israelites labeled as being in cults or hate groups or placed on watch lists because of their wicked actions or their out of control behavior. We don't like that. 
as sin. That the Most High has indeed raised up real men of Zion. Who ain't scared to deal with any and all issues regarding the lost sheep of the house of Israel worldwide. We will continue to blow the trumpet in Zion. And continue to warn the people. And clearly let the heathens know we ain't going. For that guilt by association game. You heathens love to play. Let's go to the book of the prophet Joel. Joel chapter 2. Verse 1. One verse, Aki. In the book of Joel. Chapter 2, verse 1, we read, Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Most High cometh, for it is near at hand. In part two of this lesson, Mr. Shabbat, we will highlight some out-of-control Negroes, some of whom are masquerading as Hebrew Israelites, and I believe are well-paid agents to make black Hebrews look bad down here in America, clowning on street corners, dressed like clowns, cussing out Hebrew women and each other in public spectacles to the delight of our enemies who hurry up and label them hate groups while attempting to label any and all who call themselves Hebrew Israelites as somehow being affiliated with them. If y'all don't like that, put a 77 up in her. Or I'm not all in one. The longer you are on this walk, the more they may try to play this game on you. Told I, I don't like it either. Continuing. The true remnant of Zion ain't having it. Back when I first started having Bible classes over 300 years ago, or excuse me, 30 years ago, 300 years would have been a long time, wouldn't it? <laughs> no, my name ain't Jacob Methuselah Israel. It's just Jacob Israel. I'm sure we're going to have to edit that out the tape. <laughs> They're going to be like, see now, that brother full of wine over there. I knew it was something. <laughs> No, don't get excited. I just couldn't read my writing right here. <laughs> Looking like hieroglyphics. <laughs> well, you Hebrews crazy. <laughs> I'll get out. Whew. Back when I first started having Bible classes, over 30 years ago, I found out about some brothers up in New York who knew that they were Hebrews from watching them on public access television. And I saw their phone number on the TV, and I called them. After being in the truth for a couple of years, I wanted to know why those brothers was wearing Parliament Funkadelic-type outfits with hexagrams all over them. And I wanted to holler at one of their leaders about the 12 tribes chart. And how in the world they knew the exact identity of the 12 tribes of Israel. And where I could get one of those GPS 12 tribe tracking devices that they had found somewhere. The name of this Hebrew camp was the Israelite School 
a universal practical knowledge, or the ISUPK, that was based out of Pennsylvania. I spoke to one of the elders of the New York camp, who tried to tell me that the hexagram was the star of David. And I gave him a homework assignment on the seal of Solomon. And told him his real name, the hexagram. And how it's one of the most satanic symbols in the occult world. It must be used to cast forth spells, demonic spells, and summon forth demons. So, you know, I broke this brother off, gave him a homework assignment on the seal of Solomon. Told him to do a little research. And find out why David would slap the taste out of his mouth for associating him with one of the most satanic symbols in the world, who these brothers obviously didn't know, that the hexagram was used by Solomon, King David's son, when he backslid and was worshiping those strange wives of his gods. And the elder also couldn't give me an answer on how they came up with the 12 tribes chart, or where I could buy one of those 12 tribe GPS tracking devices. We told those Hebrews to take them hexagrams off. But we let them know, you know, we glad that y'all know that y'all Hebrews, man. And we calling out of love. We just hollering our, our brothers out there on the East Coast. Yeah, but y'all take them hexagrams off, player. Don't never come around her with them on. We ain't having it. So they've been aware of us. We've been aware of them for quite some time. Now, it was around that time that I started teaching weekly classes. You know, doing radio shows and a couple of TV programs. And truly became the remnant seeker that you heard today. Off and on over the next 10 to 15 years, we would contact those Hebrews out the ISUPK, the Israeli School of Practical Knowledge. You know, whenever we uh, read a newspaper article on them, or saw them on a TV program like the Morton Downey Jr. Show, and we would still continue to admonish them, man, y'all still ain't took them hexagrams off yet? Yeah, well, we saw y'all on Morton Downey Jr. I, we like how y'all handle a couple of them heathens. But I still don't get them Parliament Funkadelic outfits. I thought I saw Bootsy Collins sitting up there with y'all, with them boots on. Man, I wouldn't be caught in my basement looking like that with nobody around. What's wrong with you cats? Well, brother, you know, that's culture, culture. I said, you know what the main word in culture is? I caught and hung up on them. So, you know, we stayed in contact with them off and on during the years. They was aware of us and we was aware of them. Well, fast forward to 1999. And we found out just before the turn of the century, 2000, heathens panicking, thinking it's the end of the world. We found out in 1999, here in STL, that the then leader, of the ISUPK, an elder up there called Araya. This cat was prophesying loudly that Yahushua Hamashiach was coming back to earth on January the 1st, 2000 to kill all white people and those that wouldn't be dead was going to be enslaved. And the world was going to be given back to black Hebrews. Now with the advent of the internet at that time, just before the turn of the century, this message quickly spread. And this group of Hebrews was classified as an extremist and black supremacist group and had Hebrew Israelites put on watch lists from one end of America to the other. We called these Hebrews. 
I tried to speak with this wannabe prophet, Array, to ask him if we could have the honor of giving him the brick shower he would deserve if there were any white folks left on the planet on January the 2nd, 2000. For some reason, he would never come to the phone, y'all, to answer that question. Well, of course, it didn't take long to find out this Negro was a false prophet. And right after his prophecy was proven false, and it was obvious, he wasn't sent from the Most High Yah, as he claimed. One of the false prophet arrayers, underlings, raised up and broke off from this group and started his own. This underling's name is Jermaine Grant, also named as, also known as Tazakdia, or however you pronounce it, Tazakia who now claims he is the Holy Comforter sent by the Most High. This night clubbing, womanizing Negro is such an egomaniac, he has had action figure dolls made after himself and is hustling and deceiving. Every last one of those Hebrews sitting up under his kneecaps. But don't believe me. Let me share with y'all the link that you may see for yourself. With your own eyes, as it were. The very fact. that this young brother who took advantage of the old boy looking like a damn fool come January the 2nd made his move up in that camp took some of the key brothers and sisters and ran on around the corner and started his own thing and now them very brothers that he came up with they all at each other's throat. And now the last one of them giving Hebrews worldwide a bad name. Click on that link right there. Here's a Negro still look like he eating pig meat. With fat swollen jowls and big old pig belly hanging on him. Be up in the club sweating like he going to the electric chair. This Negro gonna get a doll made out of himself. For who to play with? Is you playing with dolls? I believe this Negro is a paid agent. Church, Harlem Church, Sue's toy maker, after talk, talking doll in a leader's image. Do y'all see that? Can you believe that? But that's what we're dealing with. Harlem Church Shoes toy maker Emu Vakal, after talking doll and leader's likeness, is not black enough. Do you see the doll right here with these Liberace style clothing on? This is what Jermaine Grant like to dress up like when he playing Hebrew. Scroll down and take a look at this Negro. You see him in them same yellow outfits the doll got on? That's the Negro running around on the East Coast calling himself the Comforter. Jermaine Grant. Mamie Grant's boy. Been out of control since he was still in now letters when he was little. Wanna be rapper? Scroll down and look at him, look at you. Wanna be rapper? Found out he was an Israelite. Waited on old Orion to look like the damn fool he was trying to prophesy. The most high sent him and he sure ain't sent this clown. 
with them Liberace outfits on. He got more sparkles on than women supposed to have on in public. Nick wrote black as Lou Rawls and got on yellow. Looking like a big boo sugar bar. Like you should be on a box of cereal. I profess to y'all. Our enemies look at these clowns. And the first thing they want to holler. Uh-huh. We, we know about you Hebrews. Y'all with that Hebrew up there calling itself the comforter? Who you talking about, uh, oh, Jermaine, no, we ain't with him. We ain't with Jermaine Grant. Have you lost your mind? We ain't with none of them false prophets, those deceivers, those wannabe leaders. They flow showing and clowning, and we ain't having it. Now, some might ask the question. about the so-called comforter. But Zion, the Most High, has truly raised up watchmen in Zion, who ain't scared to turn the draws off none of these clowns, who would seek to defame our people, but smirch our name, and allow our enemies to use the old guilt by association game. Because they hear you say you a Hebrew Israelite. Y'all click on that link right there. We got a couple of short video clips. So from this day and forward, when y'all hear these Negroes, of these Negroes, you will know who they are. Just by a little simple research. So nobody may never be able to make you hold your tongue hostage. That you scared and don't want to declare that you are Israelites. Because they may start talking about one of these out of control Negroes they want to associate you with. When you got the power to simply say, I ain't with that. I roll with the most high. So, the so-called comfort of reveal industry and see how does everything work behind the scenes this label promises to become one of the world's most successful record labels in the history or entertainment labels in the history of the business black icon entertainment with a ceo st george the dragon slayer claims to do it like nobody has ever done before let's take a look behind the scenes <laughs> Better duck. 
Coming down sunset, sitting on D. Feeling like clock, all eyes on me. Bricks, bandana, and I'm no trees. Please, I spit crack every verse of key. Some say Callis, some say Kali. Twelve years down, and I finally if you flee. Want to, we can supply you. Give him some, Give him spent that condo He didn't run, Sunday had a whole church singing a song Why they had to send my baby home With some that paper long Been a G in the game, now my son on the throne I am the beast, feed me rappers and feed me beats I'm untamed, I need a leash I'm insane, I need a shrink I love brain, I need a leech Why complain on easy streets? I don't even talk, I let the visa speak And I like my Sprite Easter Pink In my wrist wash your pub, but the mule is cooler I have more juice than your jeweler Touching, I will bust your medulla That's a it is not a tumor Red light, red light, stop your rumors I stay on track like a box of pumas I just rock, rock, rock for Junior I am a little big Cause we take it in did y'all see this fat belly negro climbing out of Rolls Royces and Maseratis and stretch hummus, gyrating with the video holes and clubbing? Sweating like a field hand, covered in hexagrams. This Negro actually has some of our brothers and sisters so deceived that they actually are calling him the comforter and address this Negro with reverence. Many of y'all heard of the R&B group Bell Bib DeVoe. Two of their members or devout members of Jermaine Gramps camp. And they paying heavily in taxes called tithes and offering. For this Negro living up in a $700,000 mansion. Driving a car as you look at. While the brothers who are being made merchandise out of the brothers and sisters sitting up under this Negro's kneecaps driving 72 Chevys leaking all. This is an old hustle game that these wolves in sheep's clothing have been devouring the flock of the lost sheep of the house of Israel for a long time. Now, as previously stated, Jermaine Grant waited for Araya to make his fatal mistake and blow it, call himself, calling it, when the Messiah coming back and handing the world back over unto us. So Jermaine Grant being the true slickster that he is, made his move. Who is Jermaine Grant? Click on this next link. Let me show y'all a little bit more about him and the background of some of these Hebrews that you may become a victim of guilt by association of wit. Who is Jermaine Grant, part one? Taking for Armageddon, 
The man with the most power with the extremist Hebrew Israelite movement is none other than Jermaine Grant, age 33 as of 2011, the head of the Israelite Church of God in Jesus Christ. Grant arose from the lower levels of the organization to become its top leader in the year 2000. This was after Christ failed to return to earth to slay or enslave all Edomites, as had been long prophesied by Grant's predecessor, Orea, the movement's founding father. It was a period of great tumult within the extremist Israelite world. Many of Orea's high-ranking followers split off to form their own new factions. While inside the church organization, Grant's star ascended just as rapidly as Arias fell. A former rap music label owner and restauranteur, Grant is a highly charismatic figure. What's going to happen? Because every time you try to feed it, it ain't that you compassionate and compassionate, but every time you try to feed an animal, you get bit. Animals are Although his Hebrew name is Tazadakia, his title is Chief High Priest. He is also sometimes referred to by others as the Holy Spirit made flesh. A comforter, I, I really do. I, I thank God. Today, he can be seen in numerous YouTube videos preaching to gatherings of hundreds and typically dressed in shiny silk robes and head wraps rendered in blues and purples. He's often pictured in stretch limos or tour buses, very elaborately made with his portrait and his nickname, The Comforter. Since 2001, Grant has produced the Archangel Awards, a version of the Grammys for musical artists who are vowed loyalists to the Israelite church. The most often of them is Wanya Morris, the lead singer of Boys and Men, a popular R&B group that's won four real Grammys and sold over 60 million records. According to the former members of the church, Grant has instituted mandatory tithes and general offerings from his followers. Also. During his 2006 I Will Not Leave You Comfortless tour, in which he toured six East Coast states in eight weeks, Grant reportedly demanded an additional $25 per attendee in the form of an additional high priest offering. Another world tour is planned later this year. Grant, who did not reply to a request for an interview to this article, is an energetic man. Under his leadership, the Israelite church had expanded rapidly and its hidden truth television programming can be seen on public access channels around the country. Meanwhile, the tone of the extremist Hebrew Israelite grows ever more apocalyptic, with his followers feverishly searching for signs of a bloodthirsty black Yahweh's impending return. This summer, well, according to the time of 2008, Grant boldly predicted that a hellish earthquake would soon herald the return of Christ and the beginning of Hebrew Israelite rule. Um, Everyone knows that, you know, just just a side note, but everyone knows that uh, Jesus had prof prophesied about earthquakes in diverse places in, in all the Gospels. They never said anything about a Hebrew-Israelite rule, but uh, everyone knows that that's what Jesus prophesied. So it's nothing new. Anyway, he didn't set a date, but his prophecy still heightened the mood of eager anticipation for the coming doom of all enemies of the true Israelites that coupled with the increasing militants and the numbers of his movement is basically what worries us all. Here is a fat belly Negro dressing like the Pope with hexagrams all over his Liberace outfits prophesying about earthquakes that didn't happen as he claimed they would. Who was giving Hebrew Israelites a bad name which causes our enemies to try to associate all Hebrew Israelites 
with these types of out of control Negroes. They try to use that old guilt by association game. Now in part two of who is Jermaine Grant, you about to be introduced to John Lightborn. Better known as General Yohanna, the current leader of the ISUPK, who you may have often seen up on the street corners of New York and DC, putting on a sideshow for all to see. General Yohanna was interviewed by Esquire magazine, and y'all about to witness an excerpt of it. And part two, or who was Jermaine Grant? It's time many of y'all lay eyes on this brother, General Yohanna. How are you going to be the General Ock and you going to make me buck private Jacob? You think that's going to work with some Hebrews out the STL? Negro, you done lost your mind. God and the General. Leader discusses Black Supremacist Group. Here's the intro. Question from the interviewer. Are you familiar with the late Yahweh bin Yahweh and his violently anti-white Hebrew Israelite cult, the Nation of Yahweh? Yana replies, I'm not familiar with how the group emerged and why he chose Miami where the nation of Yahweh was based in the 1980s at the time. There wasn't any Hebrew Israelites down there, so maybe that's why. But he, like Tazadakia, leader of the Israelite Church of God in Jesus Christ, another Hebrew Israelite group, tried to take a man and make himself a god. Once you elevate men above men, you basically have a demagogue and a cult, and sooner or later the nature of the Hebrew Israelite will not allow that god-man to survive. Question from the interviewer. Who is Tazadakia, legal name Jermaine Grant? What's his background? Yohanna answers. He was actually a part of my camp in Manhattan on 50th and Broadway. At the time, the early 90s, he was in the music industry trying to become a rapper. There was a need for someone to run our video department. He was chosen as an assistant to the head of video, which gave him access to the leaders. That's how he became known. Even now, he's only known because of the authorization from Oriah, one of the founding seven heads, leaders of the Israelite movement. But now, they're showing Tazadakia as some great new charismatic leader. Most of what is a facade. The bus he used to go on the I Will Not Leave You Comfortless tour were staged. Those buses were being rented out to make him look like he's a superstar. He just like any other ambitious rapper who, when they get a contract, they have to make themselves look flashy and appear the part, which is basically what the Israelite church has done. The people in the church are in horrible poverty. And just as a side note, anybody can check with a good friend of mine, Rebel Alliance Media, to uh, confirm that. Check out his videos. Continuing. Meanwhile, Tazadaki is charging 1500 yes, $1,500, to attend their annual Passover and thousands of dollars in quote-unquote priest fees to keep the facade going in order to get more people to his organization. We consider that, like all other churches, just money grubbing the cults and establishments. They just have the title Israelite on it. Next question. What are the major differences between your doctrine and theirs? Yohanna replies, Well, one, we always thought that Jesus Christ did not come from a virgin birth. Now, they teach Jesus came from the Immaculate Conception. The Israelite school never endorsed the idea in its entire history. We teach that he was born from a man and a woman, Joseph and Mary. The second change was they changed the name of God, saying that Yahweh wasn't God's name. Now, they teach, like the Roman Catholics, that Jesus is God, and it's actually Jesus you're reading about in the Old Testament. The biggest change came, though, when Tazadakia declared himself as the Comforter and the Holy Spirit. Quote unquote. First of all, a man is the Holy Spirit. 
I am the Holy Spirit. I am the comforter that God. The is. one the scripture says comes before Christ return. Just before Christ's return. And just as a side note, I have not found any information like that in the New Testament. Continuing. You live only by the Old Testament laws, some of which, like polygamy, are illegal. We don't go against the law. But we believe that, according to the Bible, man has a right to have more than one woman. Now, they have gays getting married and all kinds of stuff, saying adults should be able to marry children and animals. In the Bible, marriage is between man and woman. We teach young men that they should not be promiscuous and sleep around with a bunch of women. We say not to do those things. And the Lord is against the abuse of women. That means if you have sex with her, you are to spend the rest of your life with her, unless she commits adultery. That's all the information I found on Tazadakia, aka Jermaine Grant the Comforter. There may be more out there. If there is, anybody can email me at ssoreal at gmail.com. Thank you for listening. Stay tuned for more. Now notice how our enemies, when they put these little five-minute clips together, love to associate Hebrew Israelites as being in cults and in extremist organizations and hate groups. These are cold words that our enemies will use and try to apply to the whole body of all those who publicly let it be known, I'm a Hebrew Israelite about the tribes of Israel. Now, as previously stated, I believe some of these Negroes are paid agents. Paid the clown publicly to give interviews to television and radio stations and newspapers and magazines. And oh, how the heathen love to eat it up and run with it. And then all they got to do is whisper that one says something about the other. Then they like Tupac and Biggie. They mortal enemies. Now, notice how the general in his camp believes that Yahushua was conceived in fornication between Mary and Joseph. Oh, Mary and Joseph was horny, wasn't they? Oh, they just ran on off to the back of the barns down in them pastors and uh, got busy in fornication, did they? That's what a Messiah, you Negroes and lost your mind. And y'all still teaching that madness up there. Johanna was quick to call Jermaine Grant's group a cult, but admitted he came up through his organization. Yet we often see the general and his crew in a clown outfits on, overladen with hexagrams in public. They on the street corners acting like fools, giving people the public perception that this is how Hebrew Israelites look and act. Sometimes they will single out Hebrews doing their side shows. And instead of using the word to show our brothers and sisters the truth, they use it to provoke some of them into getting into heated arguments. And while cussing matches that leads to the stereotypes that our enemies will often try to apply to us. If y'all understand what Brother Jacob is saying, put a seven up in her, please. Toda. Continue. Now, we're instructed in the Word 
on how we suppose to handle the Holy Word of the Most High Yah. Let's go to the book of Titus. Titus chapter 1, verses 9 through 10. Titus 1, chapter 1, verses 9 and 10. And again, I admonish you, Zion, with all you're getting, get you understanding. In Titus 1, verse 9 and 10, we read, Holding fast the faithful word as he has been taught, that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. You supposed to hold fast the word as it is being taught. That you might be able, by sound doctrine, you gotta know what you're reading and studying and ask the most half understanding before you can call yourself going out into the world and trying to teach it. And you sure can't teach it to them by cussing them out and talking down to them. Especially Hebrew. Verse 11, we stop. Who, who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not for filthy lucre sake. How can them Negroes stand out on the corner seven days a week? Ain't none of them got no job. Because they got brothers and sisters in their camp who do got jobs, and they begging for tithes and offerings, just like cash flow dollar and TD snakes. It's sickening. They line up on sisters who got the jobs paying all the bills and to convince their co tees that they putting in work for the most high. But they counting her money so she can cash her check. Because they still want their reefers and their 40 ounces when they kicking it with the boys. And quote unquote handling their business on these side shows that they handling. I'm here to tell y'all we are instructed on how we supposed to handle sound doctrine. And if you handle it well enough, you can exhort your brethren and you can even convince the gainsayers, the non believers. But what some of these brothers are doing is provoking the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And y'all remember back to the time before y'all got into the word. Even some of the most elder sisters in the room, I'm sure y'all can remember when y'all wore tight dresses. And you like dancing a little bit up in the clubs and popping fingers and you was in the world. You didn't know no better. And you sure wouldn't have wanted no brother when you was in the height of that. Looking down and coming down on you, calling you a whore on sight. He don't know you. He don't know nothing about you. And many of y'all growed up in captivity down here in America. Y'all ain't taking too much loud talking from no Negro to begin with. Because y'all wasn't raised to take no loud talking from some Negro standing on a street corner. So it's easy to understand why you can be provoked. And the provoking that some of these Hebrews is doing is shameful before the Most High Yah and before men. But don't believe me. Somebody click on this next link. And let me give y'all a demonstration of why we putting this two-part lesson together, guilt by association. Don't associate none of us, the remnant of the lost sheep of the house of Israel, who got good sense. Don't associate us 
with these few out of control Negroes that our enemies love to try to throw in our faces. Demonstration up in New York. Black woman burns all up in Washington, D.C., excuse me, with these members of the ISUPK, this Israelite school of universal practical knowledge. Yes, they might be out of a pagan. The children of the art of a lion, I know. Evil and move with Satan. Righteous shot in the continents of the Almighty One. They might be art of demons. The children of the art of a lion, I know. Evil and move with Satan. Righteous walk in the continents of the Almighty One. Poor people see hostility rising daily. To Saudi Arabia, that's supposed to be our land. Why don't you put some clothes on? Don't worry about it. Who's our fathers? 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 Who's our fathers?
to be a shine and light unto the world. If y'all agree with Brother Jacob that that is not how the Most High wants us to be a shine and light unto the world, put a 1,000 up in her. They out of order. And to post these things proudly like they doing something, you out of order. And you giving Israelites worldwide a bad name and we don't appreciate the guilt by association gain. Toda. There's another group of black Hebrews. They call themselves Great Millstone. Another offshoot from these same brothers taught at the kneecaps of that false prophet who was wrong on January the 1st, 2000. They done broke off and they started their own group. They call themselves GMS. Some of y'all may have heard of them. Great Millstone. Who used the same street corner tactics as the ISUPK. Now the leader of the GMS is a cat named Tahar who admitted he was taught by the false prophet Array, who predict, predicted, prophesied the destruction and enslavement of the heathens back in 2000. And these are some more cats that are clean, out of control, Yisrael. But don't believe me, for our enemies have used example after the example of some of these great millstone Hebrews to show the cult type behavior that makes them label Hebrew Israelites as being fanatics and extremists and hate groups. But don't believe me. Click on this link. Here's a GMS member by the name of Peter Moses. Killed a little Hebrew boy. Had the boy mama in on a murder. One of his four or five wives. They made this Negro cut his locks off. And he looked like a sheared goat up in court pleading guilty to the murder of this little boy. And I despise you Negro. For your wicked acts and the things that you do to get a true remnant of a house of Israel who have turned back into the Most High with all of their heart, mind, body, and soul a bad name. Peter Lucas Moses uh, refers to himself as a radical religious uh, person who is with the black Hebrews. And he just uh, pleaded guilty to killing a four-year-old and a woman that he was living with. He killed the four-year-old because he thought he was gay. We have a local news report on this. Let's watch uh, and we'll discuss. Klein says Jaden Higginbotham was the only child who lived with the group who wasn't fathered by Moses. Prosecutors say Moses told Sis to get rid of the boy and became angry when he heard Higginbotham hit another child on the bottom. Klein says based on the action, Moses believed four-year-old Higginbotham was homosexual. In that religious belief of this organization, uh, homosexuality was frowned upon. Klein says Moses took Higginbotham to the garage, played the Lord's Prayer in Hebrew, and shot him. So this isn't just about uh, the kid being possibly gay. I don't even know what it means for a four-year-old to be gay. Um, <clears throat> it, of course, this guy's crazy. He's got the multiple women that he's living with. He believes he's a black Hebrew. And he's probably most upset that the kid is not his, and that creates some sort of problem for him in his mental state. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, having said that, it does give him an excuse, right? And so we think we're getting much better in getting gay rights for Americans. And then you'll see people make the argument, well, you know, gays are different. Don't hate the sinner, but hate the sin. Their lifestyle is horrible, this, that, the other thing. And you know what? That has consequences. And sometimes a four-year-old gets shot in the head because a guy uses that as an excuse to kill him and says, oh yeah, I thought he was gay, so what am I going to do? It says in my religious text that gay is wrong, so I killed him. 
Look, this is real stuff. And this is what I mean by politics isn't just games. It isn't like, oh, okay, who's going to be better at this game? Republicans or Democrats, conservatives or liberals. Gay people get attacked in this country all the time. This just happens to be an incredibly stark case of it. And it's just so sad to look at that kid and know that that hatred that had bubbled up in this country. And all of those pastors that we showed you over the last week that railing against gays and how we should lock them up in pens and, uh, or, and some of them just saying we should, the government should kill them, etc. Well, sometimes it actually affects people and they actually do kill gay people. And in this case, a four-year-old, and God knows whether he was gay or not gay or who cares, but he was killed anyway because of that climate and culture of hatred that was built around this issue. Now notice how our enemies say he believes he's a Hebrew Israelite and cult this and cult that. You see what I mean by they will take the opportunity from the wicked acts of one of these Hebrews and try to paint the whole body with a broad brush. Not a leader or who the group that this brother belonged to, the great millstone, is this arch name to Hall, who admitted he was taught by the false prophet Araya, who predicted the destruction and enslavement of the heathens in 2000. These different camps are all at each other's throats. You can go on YouTube and see Tahar and GMS at the ISUPK brothers' throats. They're on the street corners clowning for, whole, for the whole world to see. They film themselves cussing each other clean out, cussing out Hebrew brothers and sisters, and post it on the net. For the whole world to see. And the thing that kills your brother Jacob. Each and every one of these groups. Claim they the only ones. Who got the truth. No that cap wrong. They ain't, they ain't teaching the truth. We the only ones teaching the truth. No the, to hide them them niggas crazy. They ain't teaching the truth. We the only ones teaching the truth. Then they both pointed to Comforter, Jermaine Grant, we remember that nigga was smoking weed and uh, washing dishes at the restaurant down there, he ain't the Comforter. So all of them claim they the only ones that got the truth. Where well, her go a uh, great millstone hollering, they 100% truth. Y'all click on this next link. Because after this, you botch. And after you, those of y'all who watch this lesson, watch this lesson, you're going to know full well who these characters are for the rest of your life. And you will never be a victim of the guilt by association game that some will try to put down on you as you continue your walk with the Most High Yah. Toda, here we go. GMS is 100% truth. Really? How is that? According to what? You?
acknowledge, right. all right, we acknowledge that Ariad taught us. Right. We, we acknowledge that high priest Ariad taught us. That's why, to show respect to him, we got a video. What's the name of that video? Uh, power 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 to two, my two witnesses. Yeah. My two witnesses. Right? I will give power to my two witnesses. And that thing got a lot of hit and a lot of good comments, man. Yeah, a lot of right? people want to know who that light-skinned guy was. Right, right. And that's Ariad. Ariad. That's the man that taught everybody, right? Masha right. didn't teach you this, all this uh, information that you got. Yaquab didn't teach it to you. It was Masha, all right? It was Ariad. I'm sorry, it was Ariad. It was yeah. Ariad. <laughs> the comforter, all right? Because the comforter is the word of the most high, all right? That's right. There ain't no jab talking nigga, okay? It's the word of the most high. And all you Israelite groups, we know about you Israelite groups that have sold out to the uh, the, the Jesuits and, the, and so forth. You gonna go down right along with the Jesuits, all right? Right along with the Illuminati. You going down, all right? You shouldn't have sold out. Because when the Roman Catholic Church or the Illuminati takes over a country, they do it through the Roman Catholic Church, which is one of their agencies, right. and they do it in, in the name of um, temporal, temporal power. powers. That means you took over government, right? Right. right? If you take over a particular religion or a group of religious spiritual people, they use the uh, Jesuit order, and they call it the uh, apostolic succession. All right? So when you see a group say that, I'm of the apostolic succession, he, they're, that, that, they're juiced in. They're telling the other illuminated ones, don't mess with them guys, because yeah. we, we, we paid them off. We already wow. paid off. Wow. Paid them Look off. at that. <laughs> this time because the comforter that Christ speaks about in the Bible is definitely here.
Now notice on this video how they were constantly referred to as a racist cult. A new term we beginning to hear more and more as our enemies try to apply the guilt by association game to the remnant of the lost sheep of the house of Israel in this hour. Now these are other brothers putting out videos who got foreknowledge that the whore learned that the kneecaps are the false prophet Araya. And this old Hebrew standing up on stage talking about he glad to be alive, the comforter is her. Talking about fat belly Jermaine Grant. This is a crying shame before the Most High Yah. And because they some of the loudest and most outlandish Hebrews down here in the captivity in Babylon. Our enemies love to take the ball and run with it. Whenever they get caught up. And a young brother was right at the end of that video. For all that talking, they ain't killed nary a member of the Illuminati. They ain't laid down nary a Klansman nor a white supremacist. But we sure seen Peter Moses, the great millstone member, kill that four-year-old boy. And that third of his four wives, the boy's mama. Had one of his other wives kill her. And y'all sure cuss out some Hebrews walking up and down them streets. But I don't see you getting with heathens like that. So here we have all these different factions. That have broken away from each other. And they all claim they're the only ones teaching and preaching the truth. When in fact, I think some of these Negroes are paid agents. If y'all agree with Brother Jacob, put a 77 up in her. I think some of these Negroes getting paid. Because ain't none of them got no jobs. And General Yohanna look like uh, he ain't missing too many baby back rib meals. That Negro big as a grizzly bear. Taha. Look like he, uh, we know that he loved white women. Oh, they didn't tell that on him. He known to run behind Missy. But want to spit some fire about being a Hebrew Israelite. Oh, the heathen your enemies, but you asleep with their women, Hunter Hall. Light-skinned Negro, you can't be trusted on sight. So they don't look like they're missing too many meals around the jowls and belly regions. So they're getting paid somewhere. And I don't believe sisters that stupid that they continue to feed, clothe, and house these Negroes for free. So my logical conclusion, being a researcher, some of these Negroes are paid agents. Now get this. Some of the lower ranking members of these groups, they don't have a clue what their leaders are doing and are leading them into. We praying for our young ox to wake the hell up. Read that Sirach 12 again. 
that y'all hate sinners, and you doing good for wicked men, you're going to get twice the evil back. Not your brother Jacob's word. Read the words of wisdom in Sirach chapter 12. But I truly believe that. I think some of these Hebrews are paid agents. Clowning in public. So that our enemies can point and say, See that? There go those black Hebrew Israelites. We didn't heard about y'all. And want to lump us all in the same bag. The guilt by association tactic. To keep more of our people from reclaiming their true heritage, our true birthright, as the direct descendants of the children of Israel. They want to prevent it by any means necessary. And if they can catch a young Hebrew fresh into the walk, caught on a words, and they throw all this at them, it'll make them run back to the church. Because the pressure they already getting from their mom and daddy and love ones is overwhelming. Don't let them get hold of uh, the deeds of black racist cult type materials. They'll browbeat them to death. And how should Todd uh, giggle like a little girl playing with a doll? As he got another Hebrew off the path with the Most High. But we ain't having it. Because the Most High had raised up real men in Zion in these latter times. Who ain't scared to blow the trumpet in Zion and warn the people. And this don't even take into account, y'all. The Hebrew groups that are non-Messianic maniacs. And the various camps teaching man-made doctrines. Like preterism. You know, uh, Nero was the Antichrist. All letting the revelation happen 2,000 years ago. We living in the kingdom age. Well, where your shoe at? Where my handmaids and servants at? Well, I'm struggling trying to pay some bills right there. No, this ain't hardly the kingdom age, player. You got Hebrews down in the morning raping babies. Drugs and young sisters and just taking her in. They lost their minds. You got old fools down there looking at them young gals. And a little girl like a little brother her own age. But no, he want her to be his fifth or sixth wife. So they run off the competition. Lust filled Nick Rose. But you got Hebrews running around her talking about just the kingdom. You done lost your mind. All them fags and lesbians I see switching in Jerusalem every year at that gay pride parade. Walking around with thongs on with all they pink kike hind quarters hanging out with high heels and chains. This ain't hardly the kingdom. But you got these various camps with these man-made doctrines. Teaching spiritual foolishness. You got so-called mores and leaders teaching Israelites not to keep Yah's holy days. Don't keep the Passover. You can't keep the Passover. Negro, what? No. See, if you read in the concordance, why we got to go to the concordance? Or how about we go straight to the book itself? Why we got to read the other book? But according to the Greek concordance, the hell with them Greeks, them booty burglars, them boy lovers. I ain't gonna consult no punk concerning nothing dealing with my ancestors, morons. This don't even take into account all of these, you Hebrews, that we have to contend with. That those who heard that you are Hebrew Israelites will try to associate you with as they play that old guilt by association game. These Hebrews teach these things and continue to have 
those who they lead walk in sin while making merchandise of the very Hebrews that they are deceiving with their false and wicked ways. Yah has given us all the spirit of discernment. Your spirit will tell you or if you, if you were dealing with someone righteous or someone wicked. Let's go to the book of Malachi, chapter 3, verses 16 through 18. The book of Malachi, chapter 3. Verses 16 through 18. We read. Then they that feared your qua. Spake often one to another. Ain't nothing wrong with us calling and talking with one another. Nothing wrong with it at all. Most of us got cell phones. I don't cause nothing to talk long distance. I can show no holler at me early this, this week. He lives a half the world away. Shimano y'all often get in contact with me weekly. Ain't nothing wrong with hollering at your brethren, Zion. Then they that feared your choir spake often one to another. And the Most High hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared Yah and that thought upon his name and they shall be mine saith your choir of hosts in that day when I make up my jewels and I will spur them as a man spurreth his own son that serveth him then shall you return and discern between the righteous and the wicked between him that serveth Yah and him that serveth him not. Indeed, you have the spirit of discernment, Zion. And some Hebrews you done came across, they ain't said a word to you, and the heart stood up on the back of your neck. Because you knew something wasn't quite right there. And when it proved out, that your first inclination was 100, that was your spirit of discernment at work. If y'all understood that, put a seven up in her. For the Most High gives us the spirit to be able to differentiate between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serve the Most High and him that serve him not. Told I. The wrath of the Most High comes down upon the children of disobedience. Let's go to the book of Ephesians chapter 5, verses 1 through 12. Let me put a few scriptures far across the bow to the workers of iniquity. The book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verses 1 through 12, we read, Be ye therefore followers of Elohim, as their children, and walk in love, as Messiah also have loved us and hath given himself for us as an offering and a sacrifice to Yah, for a sweet-smelling savor, but fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as become of saints, 
neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know, that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater, have any inheritance in the kingdom of Messiah and of Elohim. Let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these come up the wrath of Yah upon the children of disobedience. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. For you were sometimes darkness. But now are ye light in the master. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Proving what is acceptable unto Adonai. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. But rather reprove them. Put them in check. Call them out. Blow the trumpet in Zion and warn the people. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. How you going to get around that? You can't get around that. Here is wisdom, Zion. By their fruit. You shall know them. Let's go to the book of Matthew chapter 7. Verses 15 through 23. Let's see what the true Messiah of our people, Yahushua HaMashiach, had to say pertaining to these matters. By their fruits, you shall know them. In Matthew chapter 7, verses 15 to 23, we read, Yeshua said this, But why are false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves? You shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by the fruits, you shall know them. Not everyone that saith unto me, Master, Master, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Master, Master, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils. And in thy name done many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them. I never knew you. Depart from me. Ye that work iniquity. So indeed Zion. We were warned. To beware a false prophet. And how do you know if a prophet was truly sent by the Most High? What he prophesied will come true 100% of the time. If y'all understand and agree with that, put a 1,000 up in her. So if you out here fat-mouthing and call yourself prophesying and you wrong as the day is long, you eligible for a brick shower. Which we 
gladly give out in the STA. That's why you don't hear about no false prophets running around down here. No, you got to move a couple of thousand miles away from here with that demonstration player. Got some Negro named Mel Kazetic running around the Holy Land talking about he a prophet. He come up to New York and sit on the banks of the Hudson River with his little djembe drums. He going to split the ocean in half. That Negro beating on them Congo drums like a monkey and shaking and shivering. And by the time the cat calls and the hee horn got a little bit too loud for him, Negro looked like Usain Bolt taking off running, leaving his little drums. For well, somebody hollers, get the bricks, let's get them. That Negro didn't stop running until he got back down there to the West Bank. Let not come back over her with that foolishness. Nor the remnant of Zion, nor a true prophet when we see him in her. You wannabes and clown pretenders giving my people a bad name. We sick of it. And you ain't got to go ask nobody who is that brother Jacob talking about Farrakhan and Venomy like that. Negro, listen. And you know who Brother Jacob is. Real men ain't never been scared of real men, partner. And wish I would catch one of you Negroes licking your eyebrows and winking, looking at one of my daughters. Indeed, by their fruits we know them. And we shall continue to blow the trumpet in Zion and warn the people. Hallelujah. That's our lesson. Guilt by association. Part two. False prophets, leaders, and teachers. Your brother Jacob prays that it was well received. And I hope y'all got understanding from the demonstration we put down. And once again, we send out a worldwide warning to some of these paid agents and weaklings running around here calling themselves Hebrew Israelites. You do us a disservice. Those who are down for their crown with Yahushua HaMashiach. The true lion of the tribe of Yehuda, the holy lamb of Yah, the true Messiah of this people, Yisrael. All you punk busters and pretenders, we gonna keep tearing the draws off of you. And we don't care that you looking like a gorilla sucking on a lemon, lips all tight, you mad, I'm mad. You get this nickel plated iron put on your player. I'm up out of St. Lucifer. We don't call this the ST hell for nothing, partner. You Negroes out of control. It's time for the real men of the house of Israel to stand up. Lace your boots up tight. And get ready to put some work in for the most high yah. Again, that's our lesson. Guilt by association, part two. False prophets, leaders and teachers. Uh -oh.